Good morning. 8.29 a.m. here in glorious Woodtucky, Illinois. <laughs> Hello. Why did God make me this way? You ever encountered that question before? I have. Um, I've encountered that with like, for example, sodomites. It's like, why did God make me gay? Or why did God make me predisposed to sin, right? Also, I've encountered that with those in the hood, as it were. Why did your God make me like this? Why did your God put us here? Why did God make me the way I am? First of all, let's examine the question. This is very similar to asking, well, why does a loving God allow suffering? Okay? It's similar to that in this reason. Because it's based off of a false assumption. The assumption is that man is righteous and that God is flawed. Okay? What this is, basically, that question is charging God foolishly. In Genesis chapter 3, verse 15, or verse 12, from the authorized version of the scriptures, after the fall, Adam says unto God, And the man said, The woman whom thou gavest to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. Now look, look at this. The, and the man said, The woman, he blames the woman, whom thou gavest to be with me. She gave me of the tree and I did eat. Adam is blaming the woman, his wife Eve. But ultimately he's pointing the finger at God. It's your fault. You gave me this woman who messed with me and I, yeah, I messed up. But it's your fault because you gave me her. Okay? The assumption that God is at fault. Well, man is righteous. Even though, even though we messed up, right? But ultimately, hey! You gave it, you did, I'm, hey, yeah, I did, I messed up. But see, if you hadn't given me the woman, see, why did God make me this way? Why did God, like with sodomites, why did God make me gay? You're happy? No, I don't think so. Uh, why did God make you a sodomite? Well, like I said, as I have personally encountered with people in the hood, as it were, why did God make me like this? Why did God make us like this? Why did God put us here? See, again, the assumption is, the assumption, that question is based on the assumption that man is righteous and God is not. That God is flawed. Okay? Let's go to Romans chapter 3 to the most hated verses of the Richlinite free grace heretic. <laughs> Not all free gracers are Richlingites. You've got to remember that. But Romans chapter 3. Romans chapter 3, verses 10 on to verse 18. These are the most despised verses of the free grace Richlingite heretic. Because it puts the finger on you personally. And right here, this obliterates, ought to obliterate the assumption that Man is more righteous than God. As it is written, Romans 3, verses 10 on verse 18. As it is written, there is none righteous. No, not one. There is none that understandeth. There is none that seeketh after God. They are all gone out of the way. They are together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good. No, not one. That includes you. That includes me. Okay? Man, at his best state, is altogether vanity. Man, because of what we're going to look at, man is born a sinner. Okay? We're going to, look, we're going to examine this. Okay? But see, your question, why did God make me this way, is based, again, off the, the false presumption, a false assumption, as you will, or whatever, that man is righteous and God is. It's not. That God is flawed. That God is a God that plucks the wings off of flies, right? Let's continue reading. Verse 13. Their throat is an open sepulcher. 
With their tongues they have used deceit. The poison of asps is under their lips, whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Destruction and misery are in their ways, and the way of peace have they not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. And at the very first verse that we looked at today, where was the fear of God in Adam? Hmm? You gave me the woman. He charged God with what he did. That's what you're doing when you ask the question, why did God make me like this? The better question for you, dear friend, to ask is, why am I like this? But see, most of us, dear saints, most of us who encounter that question, it's, why did God do it? I'm righteous. It's not my fault. It's God's fault, right? God, so it's God's fault will be in the description box. Genesis chapter 1. Genesis chapter 1. How do you answer this? Genesis chapter 1. We are going to look at specific verses. But I want you to pay attention to this. Okay? Because when you say, well, why did God make me this way? I was born gay, right? I was born a thug, right? No, you weren't. No, you weren't. No, you weren't. See, this is similar to why does a loving God allow suffering? It's similar because at the root of it is free will again. Choice. But, Genesis chapter 1, we're going to look at specific verses here. Verse 4 in Genesis chapter 1. And God saw the light, that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. Okay? Verse 10 in Genesis chapter 1. And God called the dry land earth, and the gathering together of the waters called he seas. And God saw that it was good. Verse 12. And the earth brought forth grass, an herb yielding seed after his kind, and the tree yielding fruit, whose seed was in itself after his kind. And God saw that it was good. Okay? Verse 18 in Genesis chapter 1. And to rule over the day, and I know that doesn't sound, but we're looking at something specific here. And to rule over the day and over the night, and to divide the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. Okay? Verse 21. And God created great whales and every living creature that moveth, with which the waters brought forth abundantly after their kind and every winged fowl after his kind, and God saw that it was good. Okay? Verse 25. And God made the beast of the earth after his kind, and cattle after their kind, and everything that creepeth upon the earth after his kind, and God saw that it was good. Now after this, God makes man. Okay? God makes man. All right? Verse 31. And God saw everything that he had made. And behold, it was very good. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. God, everything that God created... At the beginning, it's good. It was good. We we just looked at, it, okay? Everything that God created was good. All right? Without flaw. Okay? Without flaw. There was a pristine innocence here in Genesis chapter 1. There was no sin there. Everything that God makes, everything that God makes is good. What happened? Genesis chapter 2, verses 1 on to verse 3. I've got to read this. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the host of them. And on the seventh day, which is our Saturday, 
On the seventh day, God ended his work, which he had made, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work, which he had made. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, because that in it he had rested from all his work, which God created and made. Now, when you read Genesis chapter 4, or, excuse me, Genesis chapter 2, verses 4 on to verse 7 is kind of a recapping of what happened in Genesis chapter 1. Verses 8 and so on are what happens specifically in the Garden of Eden. Because you'll read about what happens in the Garden of Eden, you'll be like, wait a minute, the the... The days are out of whack. It's like God. Okay, you'll you, you'll atheists notice this. It's like it's not a contradiction to Genesis chapter one, dear friend. It's verse eight, and the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there He put the man whom He had formed. Okay, because you see that um, man being formed there, and then God, beast coming out and whatnot. It's backwards, right? According to Genesis chapter one. It's not a contradiction. It's what's going on specifically in the Garden of Eden right here. Okay? Well, verses 4 on to verse 7 is just a basic recap of what has already happened. Okay? It's not a contradiction. But in the Garden of Eden, pristine relation with the Lord. They saw God. Okay? You, you uh, free grace uh, <laughs> people, devils, that say it was by grace through faith in Genesis... On to Revelation, that's a lie. Okay? I'll prove it to you. Number one, they saw God. Verse 8 in chapter 3. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. Listen, listen. Do, do. How does a voice walk? Well, the Spirit, the Spirit, yes, in uh, chapter 1. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters? Yes. How does a voice walk? Unless he has a body. Okay? All right? We've covered this in depth in many videos. But this is being made for a specific reason. Okay? So, let's go. How does a voice walk? Unless he has a body. Okay? And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam, his, Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. They saw God with their eyes. God was in the Garden of Eden physically. He was physically there. And you got these twits that come around and say that it has always been by grace through faith. They are lying to you because Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1 now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. They saw God in the Garden of Eden. Hence, it was not by grace through faith. Okay? Okay? But, now Lil had to mention that. Garden of Eden, chapter 2, verses 15 on to verse 17 now. There was no sin. Nothing that was pristine. Everything that God creates is good. But what happened? Verses 15 on to verse 17 in Genesis chapter 2. And the Lord God took the man and put him into the Garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof thou shalt die. Now, verse 15. Uh, excuse me, verse 16. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. Look at all this I made. You have the choice to choose anything you want. But, verse 17, Of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it. But don't eat this. Don't eat any of this. Now, you free grace Richlingite, Richlingites, come on now. What is that? Come on. Come on. You know it. You know it. And even atheists can figure this out. Come on. What is this called? This is called a work. Don't do that. If you do that, bad thing going to happen to you. Okay? It was not by grace through faith. Okay? But, see, mankind, man had a choice. You had all this stuff to choose from. 
don't eat that one. You have all this, but don't eat that. Simple. Free will. Choice. Okay? Choice. God said, you have all this, don't eat that. What happens? What happens? Satan comes along. Yeah, hath God said, talking to Eve. Okay? Says, yeah, hath God said, shouldn't, can't eat of every tree of the garden? Eve's like, well, yeah, but not of that one. Said not to eat it and don't touch it. He never said, don't touch it. And then Satan says what? Oh, you're not going to die. Because God doth know, in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Choice was made. Choice was made. Everything God creates is good. Yes, everything he creates, created, was good. But what happened? He gives man free will to choose. Because, as we have already covered, if choice is by coercion, it is not genuine, is it? Okay. And there are those out there, these Christians, who will say, well, man did have free will in the Old Testament, but now, because they messed it up, God took away their free will and forces them to be saved or lost. Again, that's a cruel God. That's a God who uses coercion and force. No. God did not make you flawed. What happened? See, atheist, you want to believe that your great, 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 great grandpa is a monkey or that came out of the uh, sniveling piece of snot out of the water that evolved from millions and billions and trillions of years ago in a galaxy far, far away you got some mental problems. You really do. Okay? In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Okay? God created you. Okay? We have a common ancestor. Adam and Eve. Mankind. Okay? Mankind. We are all descended of Adam, of man. There are divisions within that um, descent, absolutely. Okay? The kindred such as Shem, the Asiatics, Ham, the Africans, and Japheth, the Europeans. Okay? Yes. But those are descended from a common ancestor, Adam. Okay? All right? And God made Adam, God made man to be immortal. Because there were two trees in the Garden of Eden. There was the knowledge of the tree of good and evil and the tree of, uh, the tree of life. The tree of life. Why didn't he say anything about the tree of life? Because man was created immortal. That's why he didn't mention anything about the tree of life until after you read about that in Genesis chapter 3. Uh, let me see. Uh, verse 22, And the Lord God said, Behold, the man has become as one of us, to know good and evil. And now lest he put forth his hand, and take also of the tree of life, and eat and live forever. Therefore the Lord God sent him forth from the garden of Eden, to till the ground from whence he was taken. Okay? That's why the tree of life isn't mentioned until after the fall, because man was originally created immortal. And... With the disobedience in the Garden of Eden, did man die instantaneously? No. They died spiritually, yes. Spiritually how? Because sin came in. They did, they did directly what God said not to do. Okay? God said, don't eat that. They ate it. Okay? They ate it. Hey, hey free grace, come on. Quit being stupid about this. Okay? Quit being stupid about this. You Richlingites, stop this nonsense. How could it be by grace through faith in the Garden of Eden? How? It doesn't work. It's impossible. They saw God, okay, that don't eat that, that's a work. How could you guys be that stupid about it? How? Well, because most people are ignorant. 
That's how. But stop that nonsense, please. Please. Okay, please. As, at, at least, will you at least? Okay, you're, you're heretics and teaching a false gospel on another Jesus. Could you at least, at least acknowledge that in the Garden of Eden, okay, yeah, it was by works. Can you at least acknowledge that? Please stop it. Okay, but anyway, 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 excuse me for that little rabbit trail. So God tells man, don't do that. They do it. They had a choice. You can eat anything, but don't eat that. Free will. Okay, free will. Choice. Okay, all right. Well, I was born gay. No, you were not. I was born predisposed to sin. Romans chapter 8. Go to the book of Romans. Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. An argument that comes up. Romans chapter 8, verses nine, uh, 19 on to verse 21. For the earnest expectation of the creature waiteth for the manifestation of the sons of God. We are creatures. We are created beings by God. Okay? Now, the earnest expectation of the creature waited for the manifestation of the sons of God. For the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who hath subjected the same in hope. Well, it's not my fault. God created me this way. No, God created all things good, perfect, sinless, without anything, without any flaw. God doesn't make garbage. What happened? Man chose disobedience. Man chose. Okay? And again, God knew this was going to happen. Okay? He did. He knew from the beginning, yes, he knew what was going to happen. But see, again, if you force someone to love you, that is a love of coercion, not of choice. Hence, it isn't really genuine, is it? Come on, you can, we, we all know that, okay? We all know that, right? So, for the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, okay? I didn't ask to be made like this. Made like this? See, that's a charge against God that you are righteous and he is flawed. God is perfect. We are the flawed ones, okay? Well, why am I disposed to sin then? We're going to get to that. But here at verse 20, For the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly. I didn't want to be born a sinner. No, I didn't. But does that mean that God is flawed and I'm righteous? <laughs> no. No. We're going to touch on this. But, but by reason of him who hath subjected the same in hope. See, if God didn't give us the answer, Jesus Christ, the death, burial, and resurrection, the bloodshed on the cross, if God didn't leave us a escape route, a way out, God would be cruel. And that would not be a God worth serving. But see... He has given us the way out. Jesus Christ. Okay? He is our hope. He is our all. He is the only way. He is the way, the truth, and the life. Okay? You want to escape? You got to go to the Lord. But see, you got to go. And here's the problem that everyone is running into. You got to go on his terms. You got to be broken of your self-righteousness. You have to be unlike Adam and take accountability, be accountable. It's like, okay, you died because of what I've done. Okay? And you better fear him. Call on his name that he may save you. And see, that's what the free gracer, richling knight, always avoids. Personal accountability, but they like to hide themselves under the, the umbrella that everyone's a sinner. Avoiding personal accountability and responsibility. Just like Adam did. Okay? But verse 20, for the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who hath subjected the same in hope, because the creature itself 
also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. Now, uh, heretics will come and say, well, everybody's going to be saved. No, 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 not at all, no. God's way of salvation is there for everybody to have, yes, but God has a specific way in which to attain that. Okay? All right? Okay, being broken, having contrition, and in fear of the Lord you call upon his name. It's very simple. The hard part is getting over yourself. The hope is Jesus Christ. All right? And these verses right here are in context of looking for that hope. Jesus Christ. Okay? You try, you boot the door and try to climb up some other way, your hope is not of the Lord Jesus Christ. You're hoping in yourself. You're hoping in a thief and a robber. Okay? Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5, verses 12 on to verse 18. Romans chapter 5, verses 12 on to verse 18. Wherefore, as by one man, Adam, sin entered into the world, and death by sin, so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. Romans chapter 6, verse 23. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Man was originally created to be immortal. That's why there was no, ad, no nothing about, hey, don't eat from the tree of life, because man was already immortal. After they disobeyed God, okay, and sin was brought in by disobedience, then God's like, okay, get out, lest you live forever in disobedience, in sin. See? Doesn't work. Okay? All right? So... Adam disobeyed. He did not, uh, mankind, uh, Adam lived to be almost a thousand years old. Okay? They died spiritually because sin was brought in in that innocence. Before they were walking around naked in front of the Lord without a care in the world. Sin comes in, they're like, oh, we're naked. And they were ashamed. Okay? Because sin was brought in. Sin came in. Because of man. Because of man. Man brought sin into the world by disobeying God. Okay? That's how that works. All right? And because you and I are descent of Adam, hence, we're all born sinners. But I didn't, ch I, I know. But see, we are descended, we are of the descent of Adam. Okay? We all have a common ancestor in Adam. Yes, we do. You might not want to believe that. Your belief on that is irrelevant. That doesn't matter. The fact is that we all come from Adam. Okay? All right? And because of that, we are born in that same thing that Adam fallen. Okay? Fallen. Let's continue. For until the law, sin was in the world. But sin is not imputed where there is no law. Romans chapter 7, verses 7 and 8. What shall we say then? Is the law sin? God forbid. Nay, I had not known sin, but by the law. For I had not known lust, except the law said, had said, Thou shalt not covet. But sin, taking occasion by the commandment, wrought in me all manner of concupiscence. For without the law, sin was dead. The law was there to show man his sinful nature and need for God. And to show man that they are incapable of living up to God's standard. Okay? That's what the law was there for. We've talked about that in many videos. Okay? We've talked about that at length. Alright? But! But! The law was there to show you, you can't save yourself, that you're not a good person. There ain't no one, there ain't no man that can keep the law perfectly. But there was a man who did. Jesus Christ. God manifest in the flesh. Okay? The man, Christ Jesus. He did what no one could do. He, the word was made flesh. The flesh was sinful. But because the Lord kept the law perfectly, that sinful flesh was sanctified by him keeping the law perfectly. Okay? It's very simple to figure this out. 
Okay? But let's continue. All right? <clears throat> Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression, who was the figure of him that was to come. So right there. Okay, I, I didn't do what Adam did. No, you didn't. But see, you are descended. We are all descended of Adam. Okay? We are. All right? The, the, um, uh, the Shemites, the Japhethites, and the Hamites were all descended of, of Adam. Hence, we are born sinners. Okay? That's how that works. Okay? You might be saying, well, that's cruel. That, that's how it is. It would be cruel if the Lord didn't give us a way out, Jesus Christ. But see, with that sin of Adam, ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. You are your own God. Okay? The less is blessed by the greater. Okay? Hence, you got to be broken of your self-righteousness. All right, let's continue. But not as the offense, so also is the free gift. It is free gift, absolutely. For if through the offense of one, Adam, many be dead, dead in trespasses and sins, okay, much more the grace of God and the gift by grace. Grace is basically unmerited favor bestowed upon the lesser. The greater is blessing the lesser. That's basically what grace is, okay? <clears throat> but not as the offense, so also is the free gift. For if through the offense of one many be dead, much more the grace of God, and the gift by grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ, hath abounded unto many. Yes! Salvation is there available for all of you to have. But you got to go according to the way he prescribes. Broken, contrite, fear of the Lord and calling upon his name that he may save you. Okay? So many heretics like to remove all the important things that are necessary and just focus on one thing like just believe. And they hate Romans 3, 10 through 18, which puts the finger on that one thing. Okay, let's continue. And not as it was, and not as it was by one that sinned, Adam, so is the gift. For the judgment was by one to condemnation, but the free gift is of many offenses unto justification. What does that mean? In Adam we all die, but in Jesus Christ you can live. Okay? Verse 17. For if by one... Should have let... My scripture defines itself. Verse 17 is defining verse 16 for us. Let's look. For if by one man's offense, death reigned by one, God said, don't do that. That's a work. They did that. Okay? They died spiritually because sin was brought in. An animal died to give them clothing, and eventually they would die over time, okay? When they were first originally created to be immortal, okay? For if by one man's offense death reigned by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ. Therefore, as by the offense of one, judgment came upon all men to condemnation. We're all born sinners. Even so, by the righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. That does not mean that everyone is saved. No, it doesn't. What that is telling us is that salvation is available today. By grace through faith. But see, 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 here's the thing. You have to go according to the way he has prescribed it. 
Okay, that's why so many of these people like to avoid certain parts of scripture that puts the finger on them personally as being not good. Okay, easy believism, free grace, richling and richlingites exalt themselves as being good because they just believe. They have not been broken of their self-righteousness because they call that a work. Okay? All right? Romans 5, verses 1 on to verse 5. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulation worketh uh, patience, and patience, experience, and experience hope. And hope maketh not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. And the only way you get the Holy Ghost is if the Lord saves you and seals you with himself. The Holy Ghost, the Lord is that spirit. <coughs> okay? The only way you get the Holy Ghost is if the Lord saves you. Okay? So, why did God create me this way? He didn't. You made the choices in your life. Okay? God made everything good. Man chose contrary. Man has free will. God, in his power, gave man the ability to choose yea or nay. Man chose nay over yea. Okay? And hence, we are all born in that transgression of fallen man. And see, God would be truly cruel if he didn't give you a way out. And see, the way out, you have to be broken. God did not make you gay. God did not make you predisposed to sin. Some of you might be talking, well, what about Romans 9? We Links for that will be in the description box where we go through that. You're going to have to go through a longer video than this, okay? I'm not going to touch that in this video because this is supposed to be shorter to get a point across to you. God did not make you the way you are. You have chosen. You were not born with the disposition to be a sodomite. Hence, with you saying that, you are charging God with imperfection. No, God made everything good. Man is the one who messed it up. Okay? You have the ability to choose. And whether you want to accept this or not, Man is the reason why, not God, okay? And that's all we got to say about that.